Hey, today's the last video in my series on estrogen dominance. We're gonna answer the question that all the other videos in this series have been pointing to. How do we eliminate estrogen from the body naturally? In my first video, I talked about what estrogen is and whether it's good or bad and when it's our friend and when it's our enemy. The second video, we talked about the signs and symptoms and how to identify if you even have estrogen dominance. The next two videos talked about how to keep estrogen out of your life from the air, water, food, and beauty products that we might have. All the different kinds of estrogens, xenoestrogens, and environmental estrogens that come at us from the outside. And then the last video I did talked about the genetic implications for estrogen elimination. So we're talking more about elimination today, not so much about the genetic implications, but for everyone. And it's a long list of things we can do to really encourage elimination and detox of estrogen from our bodies. So let me get started. First off, we're gonna start in stage one of estrogen detox in the liver. We talked about this in my last video, but if you weren't interested in that video because you don't wanna know about genetics, I just wanna cover the stages of elimination. So the first stage of estrogen detox has to do with hydroxylation. And it's a pretty simple stage. It doesn't involve a lot of nutrients. But the stage going from hydroxylation to methylation, which is the second stage, does have a lot of important nutrients. And methylation really points to B vitamins, and especially the methyl forms of B vitamins, as the key facilitator to methylation. So my favorite B vitamin is called phytomethylate. And I'm gonna to link to all of the supplements that I show you here below in the show notes. Um, and you can find it on my website also under episodes. But B vitamins are super important and your just run of the mill supermarket B vitamin bottle is not gonna cut it because methylated B vitamins are 100 times more effective in terms of estrogen dominance symptoms and elimination than any other kind of B vitamin that you can get. So you're gonna to wanna to get the methylcobalamin, I'll just read them here, methylcobalamin, pyridoxal 5-phosphate for the B6, and methyl tetrahydrofolate for the folate form of B vitamins. So this is my favorite, um, I have it linked down below, really, really key important nutrient to get you going on the very first couple of stages of estrogen detox in the liver. The other really important nutrient to mention here is trimethylglycine. It's another important part of methylation. And I like this powdered version. I put it in my smoothie every morning. But I have a capsule version because I think most of my clients have, have said that they like capsules um, better than powder. So I have a capsule version in the list of supplements that I'm linking to in the description below. So that's the methylation stage of estrogen detox. That would be stage two, and that's the one that does have some implications for your genetics. So if you're interested in seeing my video on the genetic parts of the detox process, definitely check out that video. I'll link to it here. It has to do with the COMT genetic polymorphism, which is something that I have myself. So the next stage on estrogen detox is going from stage two into stage three of the elimination in the liver. And I want to talk a little bit about the sulfation part of that process. So sulfotransferase is the enzyme in our liver that makes sulfation possible. And this is a huge part of estrogen detox. We can get sulfur from vegetables like broccoli, cabbage, Brussels sprouts, onions, and garlic the really stinky ones. Also, egg yolks have a lot of sulfur in them. Or we can get that from supplements like sulforaphane or diendylmethane, which is shortened and called DIM. So I encourage you to try all of those and any of those that your doctor would agree with, and that makes sulfation happen a lot more smoothly. So that sulfotransferase enzyme is a key player in sulfation and the sulfation part of the detox process. And there's one other nutrient that I want to mention that plays a huge role in this, and that's melatonin. So sulfotransferase is made possible and stimulated by 
the amount of melatonin that's in our system. And as we age, we tend to lack melatonin as a natural source from our bodies. Melatonin is that um, daytime, nighttime regulating hormone. It's really important for sleep and healthy rest, but we lack it as we get older. And so anyone over the age of 40 is typically recommended to take between five and 10 milligrams of melatonin each evening before bed. If you're taking that high of a dose, you can rest assured that your sulfur transferase is being stimulated, and that's great for estrogen elimination. The final process in our liver that makes it possible for estrogens to be made into water-soluble metabolites that can be flushed out through the bile or the urine is glucuronidation. And this is a simpler process, but it's a really, really important process. It's like the final door that that estrogen has to go through to finally make it out of our bodies. And our bodies really like to hold it up at this door and keep that door closed. Now there are a couple of theories about why. It could be that because of all the xenoestrogens or fake estrogens that are coming in and filling our estrogen receptors, our body is signaling the need for more estrogen. And so it doesn't want to let go of the estrogen metabolites that we have as bioactive contributors to the overall estrogen level in our bodies. Or there's another theory that has to do with our gut microbiome that says that when we have an unhealthy balance of microbes, too many unhealthy microbes and not enough healthy ones because of our diet, this certain enzyme called glucuronidase is made more prolifically. Either of these and both of these theories could be true, but neither of them has been proven categorically. But it doesn't really matter because we really need glucuronidase to pipe down and settle down and stop blocking the release of estrogen from our bodies. And thankfully, science has found one way to do this. It's a component or a nutrient called calcium deglucurate. And if you learn anything about something that you can take to solve your estrogen dominance levels, then I would want you to learn about calcium deglucurate. I really like this brand. So again, it's calcium deglucurate, and that really blocks that enzyme or shoves it out of the way from blocking the door and lets the estrogen out of the body in a respect. I have a few more nutrients that I want to mention to you today that play roles in the detox process as well. Glutathione is our master antioxidant, and it plays a role along with vitamin C in really pushing out things that don't belong in our body. So it really plays a huge role in liver detoxification. This is my glutathione that I take. It is straight glutathione and it has to be in the liposomal form. It's put out by Quicksilver and um, it is liquid and it doesn't taste very good. It tastes like broccoli, honestly. You can either take this as a supplement or you can take something called NAC, N-acetylcysteine. Both of them are great at boosting the liver's power to detoxify and eliminate things like estrogens from the body. So another component of boosting your glutathione, you can do it with foods, so you can eat more avocados and walnuts if you would like. And also eating foods that are high in vitamin C will also boost your glutathione levels. But magnesium is a huge booster of glutathione as well. And I mentioned this in my last video, but magnesium glycinate is the form that I encourage my clients to take. And this is just an over-the-counter version of magnesium glycinate that I got at Natural Grocers, but I have a little bit better quality version of magnesium glycinate listed on my list of supplements that I have linked down below. Another factor that really boosts your glutathione in the body is glycine. And glycine is a protein that we don't hear about a lot. It's basically the protein that builds all of the substances in our body except our muscles. We hear a lot about building muscle and eating protein to build muscle, and that's important for people who are looking to build muscle. But there's also a lot of amino acids or proteins that are important to build the rest of our body's tissues. And the, one of the most important ones is glycine. And some of the foods that are highest in glycine are gelatin and collagen. This is my favorite brand of gelatin, and I'm gonna link to a video below that shows how I use this in making kind of a fruit juice-based dessert. 
it's just like jello basically like a thick jello jiggler that you can hold with your hand and eat it kind of like a cube and this is another brand of really good gelatin these are both grass-fed and organic brands of gelatin so this one is Great Lakes and this one is Vital Proteins so both of these are good and I wouldn't eat any other brand of gelatin personally. I haven't ever found any other really good pure brands. The reason it's important to get a pure brand of gelatin is that a lot of the toxins that an animal will store up will be stored in their bones and ligaments and that's where we get the gelatin. So we don't want to get all those toxins. So you definitely want a grass fed animal. So those are the two brands of gelatin that I encourage my clients to eat. And it does take a little bit of preparation, but really it only takes like three minutes to make gelatin. You just pop it in the fridge and it solidifies just like jello. But I don't like to add sugar to mine. I only use fruit juices, and usually I don't use the sweeter fruit juices. I use like cranberry and blueberry combined, or maybe a little bit of Concord grape juice thrown in for sweetness. And I like to make a pina colada version of it as well with pineapple juice. And then when it's heating up on the stove, I put a little bit of coconut cream in to make it creamy. So that's a really fun dessert. Again, glycine. I will list a few more food sources of glycine a little later in this video when I talk about the food sources of all these wonderful nutrients. Finally, I want to talk about vitamins A and E and their roles in estrogen metabolism. So vitamin A, we tend to think of as being something that enhances our eyesight, right? We eat more carrots for vitamin A, and then we have better eyesight. Well, that's the retinol version of vitamin A, but there are also carotenoids, and carotenoids are huge anti-estrogen factors in the body. They really encourage estrogen elimination. Carotenoids can be gotten in the diet really easily with things like pumpkin and carrots, but it's best if you have carotenoids with fat and usually cooking will heighten the intensity of their anti-estrogenic properties. So cooked carrots or shredded carrots and pumpkin along with either some butter if you're cooking them in the saute pan or if you're making them into a smoothie I like to put them in with some coconut milk. And finally vitamin E is an important way to get more nutrients that will help with estrogen elimination. We're talking about tocopherols and very importantly, mixed tocopherols. In most supplements that contain vitamin E, you will only get an alpha tocopherol. And the most important tocopherols for anti-estrogen or estrogen elimination in the body are the gamma and the delta tocopherols. So for vitamin E, the key is a mixed tocopherol. If you're looking for vitamin E in the diet, there are just a few food sources of vitamin E in the gamma and delta tocopherols, which are the strongest tocopherols for estrogen elimination. If you get a supplement over the counter, most of them are gonna have the alpha tocopherol, and that's not helpful at all for estrogen elimination, unfortunately. The only supplement that I have found with a really strong source of the gamma and the delta tocopherols is this one called Unique E. And you can get it in the pill form or the liquid form. So those are the two that I would recommend in terms of tocopherol supplementation. You can get tocopherols with your diet, and I'll talk about that in just a minute, but there are very, very limited forms of tocopherols, like I said. So unless you really like pecans and want to eat pecans every day for example you're not going to get a lot of gamma tocopherol in your diet and that's okay because these supplements are great finally i want to talk about stage three elimination the very end of the cycle for detoxification of estrogen and that is excretion that is getting our estrogens out either through the bile or the urine now the bile comes with our bowel movements and if you're constipated you can't get your bile out, right? It's stuck. And so I really encourage you to supplement with magnesium. And you don't have to have the magnesium glycinate if you're dealing with constipation. This is a more expensive version of magnesium. It's not very expensive, but it's a little more expensive than the oxide or the chloride versions that you'll get in the drugstore. You can go ahead and use the oxide or the chloride versions that you find 
in your typical grocery or drugstore if you would like to deal with constipation and talk to your doctor about how much. Usually what I encourage my clients to do is take one pill and if that doesn't work, take two. And if that doesn't work, take another one every night and in the morning you should have a healthy bowel movement. That will excrete your estrogen along with your bile. Now for your urine, you're going to deal with kidney health here. And I'm gonna to link to another video that my friend made just recently. She's training to be a naturopath and she did a great video on estrogen balance and detox through the kidney. And she talks about some really good herbs that are tonics for keeping your kidney and your liver healthy through estrogen detoxification. So I'll link to that here. Now I'm gonna break and show you some of the food sources of all of these nutrients so that you know how to get them in your diet. I always say food is the best source of nutrients. Supplements don't come near to food. Food is so much more complex. It has so many more cofactors and enzymes included than something that you're just isolating in a pill form, in a powder or a concentrate. Starting with B vitamins, the best sources of B12 are clams, mussels, mackerel, crab, beef, salmon, rockfish, milk, and turkey. The best sources of B6 are salmon, russet potatoes with the skin on, turkey and chicken breast, avocado, spinach, banana, prunes, and hazelnuts. The best sources of folate, which is another B vitamin, are lentils, chickpeas, asparagus, spinach, lima beans, and orange juice. Food sources of choline, also related to B vitamins and in my multivitamin, are liver, eggs, beef, salmon, chicken breast, cod, shrimp, Brussels sprouts, and broccoli. The best sources of trimethylglycine are raw foods, and very few of them, raw beet juice, raw spinach, and raw broccoli. Food sources of glycine are gelatin, collagen, and cooked poultry skin, most of all, and then bone broth, sesame seeds, sunflower seeds, and pumpkin seeds. Food sources of magnesium, the best ones are Brazil nuts, brown rice, cashews, mackerel, spinach, almonds, Swiss chard, lima beans, avocado, and peanuts. So for gamma tocopherols, you're gonna wanna eat a lot of pecans because that's the main food source of gamma tocopherol. For delta, there are blackberries, soybeans, cooked bell peppers, oregano, and cooked onions. Mixed carotenoids, you wanna get all of these. Pumpkin, cooked carrots, spinach, sweet potato, collards, kale, tomato sauces, red bell pepper, apricots, and watermelon. I have a course that I've made that I'm offering to everyone out there who would like to come along, and I'm beta testing that course right now. So if you'd like to be on the waiting list for the course, check out the link in the show notes. It's gonna go over not only all of these processes, but it's gonna talk about recipes and ways to incorporate some of these foods into your diet. We'll have smoothie recipes as well as lunch and dinner recipes included. So if you don't know how to get some of these foods into your diet or where to buy them, then definitely check out the link to my course below. In the course, I'm gonna cover the genetic components as well as the non-genetic components of estrogen detox and put you on kind of a routine for healthy estrogen detox for the rest of your life. I hope to see you in my next video, which is about whether intermittent fasting or fasting in general is a good idea for women in general. I'll see you then. Take care.